So you're new to working on cars and you want to turbo your engine, this is how. So basically, um, for all the people that keep asking me how they're going to turbo their Jetta, how they're going to turbo whatever basic car they have, it's fairly simple. Obviously you're going to need a car, uh, it doesn't really matter what. This, we can do an Audi, we could do a Volkswagen, I chose to do the Volkswagen, um, but you can basically do it with any car, you just have to make sure there is part support for that car, uh, meaning they do make parts for you to add a turbo to the car. Um, so what you're going to start off with is an exhaust manifold. So an exhaust manifold for the car, that is going to guide the exhaust gases into the turbo itself and make it so that bolts directly up to the engine and you can physically run a turbo on the car. Um, so first thing, Make sure they make exhaust manifolds. Second thing, find a turbo that's going to fit to your specific needs, power needs, whatever. T3, T4 turbos are the most universal. Um, they make all kinds of different sizes of them. Um, you can get like a T25, T4, T3 specifically. Um, there's so many different turbos. But make sure you get a manifold that mates up with the flange housing. So this is a T3 turbo manifold. And what that means is this flange on the bottom, this is a T3 flange. Um, so T3 manifold, T3 flange on the turbo. They bolt together and fit together quite nicely. Step two would be getting all of your intercooler piping on the car. So we've got an intake connected to intercooler piping, an intercooler up front. Uh, it comes up and then it goes to the turbo, which we have off here, and uh, that is routed to go to the engine and feed it all of that fresh turbo forced induction air that we are going to be making. So on top of all of the physical turbo parts, you are going to need extra fueling. Uh, since we will be supplying more air to the engine, you're going to need more fuel to compensate for that more air. and make the engine run properly at the higher horsepower level that you're going to achieve. So on this car it was quite simple. We've just got four injectors sitting right here. Um, it used to be a little bit different. The intake manifold would actually sit on top of the engine making it a lot harder to get to. But we went with this aftermarket intake which exposed the whole fuel rail and fuel injector so it's quite easy to replace on this car. Um, so we've got the fueling covered uh, with upgraded 42 pound injectors. After that you will need a tune. So that is a huge 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 part of turboing your car. Probably even bigger than getting the turbo itself because it's fairly easy to pick up a turbo anywhere or any of those parts on like eBay or whatever wherever you wanted to buy them from but getting a tune for your car um, that is specific for your car um, or an aftermarket ECU that can be tuned um, and finding a tuner that wants to tune your car, that is the biggest battle. Um, and there's a lot of support for a lot of different builds. You just have to do your research online. Um, and yeah, that is basically what it comes down to. At that point, it is time to make some calls, do some research, and uh, see if you can find someone that is willing to tune or a blank ECU, like a standalone ECU that is ready to be tuned and makes a plug-and-play wiring harness for your car so it can be tuned locally um, or remotely however you choose to do it. Um, so if you buy like an off-the-shelf tune, this car runs on an off-the-shelf tune so that means I sent the ECU out, someone flashed it in their shop and sent it back to me and I just have a basic turbo tune. Uh, it's good for about 300 horsepower here um, with this car um, and then there are remote tunes where someone can actually like log in, you open up your computer, uh, they open up their computer and they take control and you can just like drive around while they do some tuning on the car or however you choose to do it on a dyno or whatever. Um, or you could actually go to a physical dyno, so take the car to a shop that has a dyno and they have a tuner in that shop obviously and he will plug in, do some dyno runs tune your car and get it all squared away. Those ones definitely make the most horsepower as well as the remote tunes. The off-the-shelf tunes are more for just like a general get the car running. Um, it's kind of like what you would get from factory 
with your car that you bought so say from factory this thing came with like 330 horsepower something like that um, and then you get it tuned on like an off-the-shelf tune boom they can bump it up to like 400 horsepower or you can go with a tune locally where the tuner is present in the shop and can actually dial it in specific to your car and your air requirements and your altitude and all of that and say he can make like 500 horsepower for example um, not necessarily true with this thing but something similar to that um, with this thing uh, like I said the off-the-shelf tune makes about 300 horsepower um, if I did go with a standalone ECU and got it tuned specific to our altitude and just what I want with the car um, we could possibly make 400 horsepower with this engine how it sits um, and yeah um, so as power goes up you need to start considering the engine might want to fail on you um, pistons rods uh, valve springs cam so, like stuff like that that is going to start limiting horsepower you need to start thinking about replacing or upgrading so on this car I have gone through basically everything so we've got valve spring dual valve springs we've got upgraded valves we've got cam which I can show you so we have 276 turbo wide lobe cam in here currently we've gone through uh, we've had a 260 cam we've had a 268 cam we've had a 272 cam um, here's the 268 cam as well um, but we've gone through different variations on this so as well as the camshaft that we have upgraded and the valve the train and all of the head stuff we've got forged pistons forged rods and um, actually overboard pistons um, so we can have a little bit more displacement little bit more air volume that can fit inside of the engine I guess you would say um, so it'll breathe a little bit more in the long run so what everyone always says is there is no replacement for displacement um, so that is essentially what you're doing when you're adding a turbo you're adding more liters to the engine uh, by forcing air through the engine or into the engine so you can make more power more fuel more air more power so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this car back together. We'll throw this turbo back on. Um, we'll get it all running, and then we'll catch up with you guys after that. All right, guys. So one other thing. If you're a car person, you get used to the long days. So I was out here 9 a.m. till I think it's like 9 now. Let's check. 10.23. <laughs> um, so 9 a.m., Till 10, working on the race cars. A little bit of both. Audi over there, Jetta over here. Uh, just trying to get something running for myself. Um, making these things unreliable. Making power isn't reliable. It's like the biggest thing that people need to realize. Turbo in cars, supercharging cars, putting nitrous on cars. It is there's a reason why these high horsepower cars break a lot so anyway we got turbo in charge pipes installed we just have to get the intake tube all put back so I'm not taking the car tonight uh, I'm gonna let it sit another night uh, we've got new coolant ball in there still gotta clean up a lot of the wiring so we're gonna let it sit we're going to go over everything tomorrow while it's light out and make sure we can get everything all cleaned up. And I want to clean up the headlights as well, clear those things up, and yeah, just not rush everything. That's when stuff goes wrong. I'm trying to rush things at night to try and get it driving, not a smart thing. So anyway, I'm going to start cleaning up, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.